Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com, and this is week 34 of the raw edit file of the week that you guys are sending it in, and it is sponsored by Drobo, because when you have all these raw files, you need a place to store them. Check this out. Hold on. I'll be right back. I'm coming. Don't mind me. You got to see what's in this box. Here we go. I hope you can see this. There are five two terabyte hard drives in here because I'll put that down because I just got my second Drobo in the mail and it needs to get filled with those five two terabyte hard drives to give me 10. But let's get to this raw edit. So we have this file. It's, it, it, it's an instrument in blah. Wow. It's an interesting shot. I should try formulating my words as my brain spits them out or, wow, I even messed that up. Uh, so what I like about this photo, uh, I mean, it does have some issues in terms of composition and framing, but I love the high, tall grass, the weeds, the whatever they are. It's really cool, and it's really interesting to know if there was extra light kicked in to her face or if it's light uh, coming in through the hat, which you can see there. I mean, I really think that they used some kind of way to fill this, but they didn't send in a uh, JPEG with this file, so we won't have their their actual edit. We'll just have mine and Adam's, who's coming up next. But I, it's still a cool image to edit. The first feel that I got to pick a direction to go to go in with this photo is um, Gladiator. You know the point where he's walking through the, the the field of wheat or grass and he's you know putting his hands on there. So I I kind of want to give this a, a harsher look. It just seems like something I want to try here. Um, so I have a basic direction that I want to go and I'm going to try to accomplish it. Yeah, I hit my contrast, but I hit this I hit the um, clarity button, and I know it looks pretty stone in here. And when I say stone, that means harsh. Uh, let's say what it was shot at. 1 800th of a second, f3.2, ISO 100 with the 50 millimeter f1.8, shot with the Nikon D80. Um, I want to pull back on this color. Actually, what I wanted to do was give it more of that canon-y feel. I know I talk about that a lot, but... I'm just going stone. I'm going different. And then I'll try it multiple ways just to see what I like better. But, you know, I, I just want to try this. So I pulled back on the yellow. I pulled back, uh, I pushed my, what is that, magenta up slightly. That's where it started. And now that's where we're at. It is pretty harsh. But I don't like it, you know, soft. I want it to be harsh. I want to give it that that feel of mm, dunk. Oompa dunk. Oompa dunk. I don't know what oompa dunk is, but it's tighter. It's like a tighter, weirder feel. Do I want to... Ooh, yeah, I'm going to do that slightly. What if I did this? How's the black and white looking? Black and white's interesting, but I will come back to that. Sky, should I pump it up? Yeah. There. Did that a little bit. I'm going to do that a little bit. Let's see how our um, tone curve works today. Nope. Don't want to do that with the darks. Tighten up the shadows. No, I don't want I don't like what it's doing there. I know this is a, this is this is a harsh edit and I know it's it's something a little different than normal, but it's just a little on the harsh side. So what I'm going to do is snave snave a snapshot. That's right, snave it. I'm going to snave a snapshot and I'm going to go with that. Now I'm going to reset and see what I normally kind of considered to do. I mean, yeah, I could make it almost look realistic, but let's go with black and white and see what we could do here. Boom. 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 Fill. A little bit of fill. Just a slight tinge of fill. Um... I kind of want to bring down the background slightly. Let's see how I can do that. I'm going to draw you into it more. Boom. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, I like that. That's drawing me back into the image more. I'm not going to go back to snapshot number one and make the change, but I just thought that... 
you know, doing that little gradient tool right there brings it back. Look, there's without it and there's with it. I think it makes the image stronger. It's not so uber duper bright up in the sky. So I'm happy with that. And those are my two edits. I'm going to leave it at that. I've got, uh, let me save the snapshot number two. We've got number one, which is a more of a harsh feel. I was going for that look. And number two is more of a bringing it back to a black and white where I gradated the background slightly at the top to bring in the, to make the image, you know, basically to draw you back into it to make the background less distracting. So Adam, you are up. Let's see what you got. And we will be right back. All right. Well, it is looking like a very nice, warm, sunny day, much like it is here in Brooklyn. Um, in fact, it's it's too hot here today, too humid. Definitely looks like this grassy field is is more pleasant. But um, anyway, let's get into this photograph right here. Uh, nice shot, nice portrait. Um, you know, kind of has an advertorial look. You know, could go advertising, could go editorial. There could be some text or a logo overlaid up in that sky. It could be. For anything it could be for you know a hat advertisement it could be an advertisement for some place in the countryside that you want to visit who knows um, but it's nice you know nice color nice exposure and the overall vibe is really cool the thing I really enjoy about it too is the way that the light is hitting her face and her neck the way that it's being diffused by this hat it's it's really nice because oftentimes when you shoot somebody with a hat um, you lose a lot of the detail on their face. Now, maybe there was also a reflector being used. I don't think so. I kind of get the sense that this was shot and the light that's hitting her face is through this hat. Okay, so what I want to do with this shot is I, I really want to go color. Um, I like that you know that there's some real nice color information, these blues and, and these greens here and her skin tones. And I'm thinking again, uh-oh, again about doing some split toning. Um, I'm really kind of on a split toning kick these days. I really kind of like more vintagey film looking kind of stuff and, and I want to do that. So let's just kind of get some of our basics done right here. The exposure, I'm just going to hit the option key, mask it off. The exposure looks fine. A little blown out here, doesn't bother me at all. A little bit of recovery, well you know what, it, it doesn't really add or take away from anything. I'm going to just kind of leave that alone. Uh, the cloud detail is a little bit too blown out, so that's fine. Uh, I do want to add some blacks, so I'm just going to do that and mask it off. I'll ask, add it to taste, and that looks pretty good. Contrast, I'll add a little bit of contrast to there. I don't want it to be too harsh, so I'm just going to actually leave the contrast this time completely alone. And clarity, I'm actually going to back down because, you know, I want to just kind of soften up the skin tones here. I mean, obviously, you know, you go way down, it starts to look a little bit funny and there it's too harsh so I'm gonna kinda of go down to about there um, and what I also wanna do is I wanna bring the vibrance down a little bit actually you know I'm gonna pump the vibrance up a little sorry I meant the saturation I'm gonna pump the sat vibrance up a little bit and I'm gonna bring the the saturation down to about there I'm gonna pump up my highlights a little bit because I want some more sheen on her skin and I'm going to go into luminance, I'm going to pump up the orange a little bit, and I'm going to pump up the yellow a little bit, and I'm going to bring down my reds just a little bit. Greens, I'm going to do the same, I'm going to bring them down a little bit, and blues, I'm also going to bring them down a little bit. Now we can see how that made a difference when we turn the HSL on and off. Um, we can also use the before and after on the image to see where we go. Now this is not a dramatic difference right here. Um, I want to sharpen, so I'm going to grab the tool on her eye. Oops. I'm um, going to do that over here. Hello. There you go. Bada boom, bada eye. And we'll bring that up. Nice there. We'll mask it off. Get all that edge detail. Looking nice, 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 nice. Like there. And let's go into our post crop vignetting with highlight priority. And we're going to pull that down. No. And we're going to go to about there. And midpoint, we're going to kind of keep about there. Roundness, we're going to kind of keep about there. And we're going to feather it in this direction, like that. Okay. Now, split toning. Boom. So let's go in here. Highlights. I tend to like the highlights to be more in the golden hue. 
and shadows I tend to like in the bluish hue. Those are my starting points. Let's go in and let's grab these hues and see where we go. Okay, we're going to kind of go around there with the yellows and the we're going to maybe just give it a little bit more toward the reddish of the blues over there. Just get the balance struck a little bit over here somewhere in that kind of a vibe over there. Let's get our white balance going for us. Uh, we could do this a number of ways. We could hit the W key and we could select maybe these clouds as a neutral tone. Hey, you know what? That's not so bad. It's a little bit warmer like that. Um, you know, I can live with that. You know, maybe just see what we do with the hue a little bit. Just bring that over to there. Something like that. Again, we'll look at our before, look at our after, and we've got a cool vibe. Now, one of the things we haven't really talked about are presets. You know, maybe I'm thinking, okay, I shot a whole series of images, you know, like this, and I would like to be able to quickly affect them in this way for reference. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new preset, which I could either do by hitting the plus sign here, or I could do command, shift, and the end key. Boom. Look at that. Okay. Preset name. Let's call this uh, vintage um, split tone. Oh, we'll just call this vintage split just for the sake of it. Okay. Where are we going to put this? Well, we have a number of different options. Um, I'm going to put this in the user presets, which are presets that correspond to my user on this, on this computer. And what are the kind of things that we want to retain in this preset? Well, we could just take everything. White balance, all the tonal stuff, tone curve, yada yada. We can check all, we can check none. Um, for the sake of this particular exercise, I'm going to just select everything and collect click create okay <coughs> excuse me there we have it vintage split so now let us go back to this image let us reset this image I'm not even going to take a snapshot bam I reset this image this is the original image out of the camera now I want to see what it looks like with that new preset that I created so I'm going to just select vintage split bam there it is all of the settings, all of the adjustments, all the refinements, all the sharpening, all of the split toning, everything is there. Now, does this have to be the be all end all? No, I could go back and I can edit this and I could say, you know what, forget the split toning. Let's, you know, bring it back over to there. You know, let's keep the split toning. Let's take off the HSL, whatever the case may be. But this is a very quick and easy way for you to be able to take a collection of of adjustments that you've made and save them as a preset so that going forward in the future if you want to let's say you see an image and you say you know what that image looks kind of like something I've shot before I want to give it this kind of a treatment all you got to do is go into your presets hit that preset and bam there you are so that's it for this week um, this is my final edit for now let's see what you got Jared all right we're back and I've got Adam I've got my two edits because I did two edits this week. I am the top two. Adam is right here in the bottom in the middle. First thoughts, Adam? Uh, yeah, well, I originally was going to do a multitude of edits, and then I kind of uh, went a different way with my video. Um, I uh, see what you did there. Uh, top looking a little magenta-y. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, black and white. I, I tried black and white, and it was like, eh, I don't know. I kind of like the, the greens and the blues and didn't really want to lose that. But it looks cool. Yeah. It's nice. I mean, did you, you, you use a uh, vignette on yours? I did. I really, I, I actually, I, I, I have to admit, I very much like vignetting. Okay. I mean, on mine, I used the gradient tool up top to... I see that. ...to basically bring you back into the subject. I did that only on the black and white. I could have done it on the color. Just wanted to, you know, keep two different edits going. Right. Um, and like I said in my video, I had a, a direction to take the color. I wanted to go more of a harsh look, and I wanted to make it feel more like the the gladiator scene when he's walking through the um, the brush. You know how he's walking through the grass and he's putting his hands over the weeds and stuff. 
No? Yeah, I, I don't see how that relates to this picture, but I get what you're saying. Because it's high grass, and that's what it did. That's what it... That's the direction oh, so I wanted to go. So she's basically like closing her eyes and thinking like the gladiator is going to come and just strike her down. And so this is like a, a precursor to like a really gory moment. Yeah, that was it. That's exactly what I was okay. going for. No, I just no, wanted I to. I just wanted to go with a harsh feel, and that's right. kind of the feel I wanted to go to. Um, and that yeah. and and how I got the harsh feels, I went up with the clarity, which is something that I don't normally do. I mean, right. I went up to like ninety percent with the clarity and just and just bumped it and and just. Just went with it, you know? And, and, you know, interestingly, I went kind of the other way. I went much more muted, softer. I took the clarity down. I took the uh, saturation down. Um, so, yeah, it's interesting. You know, we just went different ways. Yeah, I mean, I like the softness. I don't mind it um, now that I see your edit. I don't mind that soft feel. Um, you know, mine is it is very harsh, but it is what it is. You know, it's, it's a different way of editing. Uh, there's three uniquely different edits here. Uh, that should give people a, a good look at what they could do. Well, one thing I, I talked about in my video was presets and creating presets. Sure. And um, one of the things that I you know, have found even for myself is that sometimes getting to the point, you know, like you see an image and you're like, you know, that kind of resembles a look or a feel or a coloration of something I've shot. And I like the way I edited in the past, but I don't really want to go back and find that edit. Sometimes you can just create a preset and hit that preset and bam, you are kind of like treating Close. that image a certain way with all those settings. And that was kind of like the impetus for, for my video is that I wanted to kind of take some of the presets, some of the direction that my editing has been taking lately and then just kind of share with folks, you know, how to take a preset. And like presets not set in stone. It's just, you know, could be a starting point. It could be an ending point, whatever. Yeah, that's, but just to share that info. That's definitely good to talk about presets. I mean, I don't use that many presets myself because I kind of have that certain way of editing. Um, right. Now, that's not saying that, that it wouldn't help me to have some, to see some different different looks, different feels. Um, but yeah, I mean, having a whole list of presets that you create will save you a ton of time in editing and let you go through and say, if you had 100 different presets, see 100 different looks that you could possibly get from an image and see what actually would work or what feels best for you. Sure. So, And like I was saying, it's like just because it's a preset, you can always use that as a starting point. Right. And then you can even adjust it from there. But, um, the, you know, the nice thing about this image is that, you know, the lighting is really nice. The colors were nice. The uh, depth of field was nice. So it really lends itself to a whole multitude of different kind of editing techniques. And I think that these three are, are representative of a lot of different styles. And I think we're going to see a lot of really cool stuff this week. Yep. And now it is time to open it up to you guys for the Raw Edit 34. Uh, we're still looking for more Raw files to come in. You can send them to froknowsphoto at gmail dot com and you know we're looking for cool shots i mean this is a cool shot that can be edited edited, and um i know a lot of people have been looking for some street photography so if you have some that you want to share i mean you can really share any type of raw file make sure you send in your raw file and your your edited jpeg so that we can put yours up against the two edits that um who well adam and i or whoever's doing them can you know basically put all three of them together because this week we didn't have a edited jpeg uh, anything else you want to finish up with, Adam? No, that's about it. Looking forward to seeing people's edits. Yeah, can't wait to see them. Put them up in the forum as well as on the Facebook page. But definitely, if you put them in the Facebook page, be sure to do them in the forum as well so everybody can see them over there. Again, thank you to Drobo for sponsoring the raw edits uh, because, yeah, I've got two now. Adam's got one. And there's a lot of raw files that need to be backed up and, and be redundant. So that is about it. Looking forward to seeing what you guys can do this week. This is Raw Edit number 34. Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. See ya!